Fantastic. So thank you all for joining us today. You are here at the People on the Move new program information session. I am Lauren Grattan. I'm the co-founder and chief community officer of Mission Driven Finance and delighted to have you all here today. I'm joined on the call by several colleagues from Mission Driven Finance as well as our uh, partner at Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Kyoko Lyons. Um, and we're delighted to share a little bit about this new program with you. Let's just dive in. A little bit of housekeeping. Uh, you'll note that you all have uh, been muted to maintain the best audio for everyone. You are having challenges. You probably can't hear me say this, um, but try dialing in using your phone. To ask a question, please use the chat function. Again, the other folks from the Mission Driven Finance team are here. We'll be monitoring that and open it up for uh, questions and answers down the line. Uh, you can also use the raise hand function to get the attention of our team. This session is being recorded. The slides and recording are going to be available on our website at the People of the Move page of Mission Driven Finance's website, and we'll be sure to send out an email to those of you who registered with further information about that as well. And because we're recording it, don't worry if you cannot stay for the whole time. Um, again, the information is going to be available after the session, and our team is always happy to answer questions for you. So, what to expect today? Went over housekeeping, get to, through some welcome and introductions, what this program is, why we started it together, and then into the fun parts of eligibility criteria. Does this make sense for either you? or organizations that you know in your network. Getting into a sense of that, uh, a little bit around the process and timeline, and then of course, opening it up for questions. We have uh, decided, or we have allocated an hour for today's session. It's very likely that we'll be done early. You know, nobody is sad about having a gift of time on Fridays. Uh, so if you have questions, we'll stay open and we'll stay on the line for a while. Um, and hope to engage in a really fruitful conversation together. Great. So, who is this? Uh, Mission Driven Finance and the Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart have partnered together to be able to uh, leverage our different strengths. The Missionary Sisters are continuing the legacy of their foundress, the patron saint of immigrants, Mother Cabrini, and really supporting those that are most vulnerable in the community. Um, people who are in transition, they're immigrants, refugees, asylees. If you know the history of, the, of Mother Cabrini, you know how incredible her work has been and exploring ways to add additional tools in the toolbox. So we've partnered together, Mission Driven Finance. We are an impact investment firm. We are dedicated to reconnecting capital and community in all sorts of creative ways, because we know that there is incredible opportunity if we can only get capital flowing into those that have been overlooked by our systems. So with this project, this People on the Move program, what we're doing first and foremost is testing the appetite for this kind of impact capital to support immigrants, refugees, and, um, and survivors of trafficking. We, are, we know that uh, folks have a really strong entrepreneurial drive as they're building new lives for themselves in their new communities, but navigating complex, often biased financial systems keeps them from getting the capital that they need to grow. So our goal with this is to make it easier for the organizations who are supporting people on the move with critical training, jobs, and access to services to get them the capital that they need to grow, especially during uh, this kind of economic environment. We know, again, because of the challenges that they're facing, that we need to do things differently. So we commit to making this People on the Move program as accessible as possible with financing terms that are designed for immigrant-led and immigrant-serving organizations, an inclusive application and analysis process, including not using personal credit scores or personal guarantees, and support for 
folks that are, uh, speak Spanish, French, Vietnamese, and Cantonese as needed. So that's the testing, but also we have a longer term goal of using this information, seeing what's out there, what's, what's the appetite like to also inspire further investors to participate in immigrant success, see what else is out there, um, attract more capital and grow these kinds of initiatives around the country. So hopefully that inspires you today as well. So I mentioned the Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart, and I love this quote that came from uh, St. Francis Xavier Cabrini, that today, love must not be hidden. It must be living, active, and true. I joined a webinar with the Cabrini Institute, and they were talking about this quote in context with a more contemporary quote from Dr. Cornell West, that justice is what love looks like in public. And these things are together really are the driving uh, impulse of this People on the Move program that we need to put love into action. We actually need to show in our processes and in where we actually put money that we see people with opportunity. We don't see immigrants as a risk. We see immigrants as a, a source of love and human connection. So the current head of the Missionary Sisters, Sister Barbara Staley, also shares with us that she believes human displacement is one of the greatest challenges of our time, and it's going to take every, every single one of us playing our part in our communities, in our, country, in our countries, to address the enormity of the need. And so really that's what we're doing, is addressing one of the most critical challenges and addressing it from a place of love. So. People on the Move is a commercial loan program to support immigrants, refugees, asylees, low-income economic migrants, and survivors of trafficking. Again, coming back to those, those goals and, and the ethos from Mother Cabrini, that we're really looking to support uh, folks with love and, and access to capital and respect and dignity. So about the program, this is for business and nonprofit support. It's financing for US-based organizations that are intentionally improving the lives of people on the move. I'll unpack that on the next slide, uh, but this is a critical capital size. One, again, we designed to support immigrant-led and immigrant-serving organizations and capital that's hard to find. So $50,000 to $250,000 is intended to complement the existing programs by excellent CDFIs around the country and be able to add tools to the toolbox. We're targeting a 6% interest rate for borrowers and flexibility in six month to four year terms. Very few restrictions on the uses of capital. We really want to come from a place of trust and be able to say, we trust you to have identify the highest and best use of that capital, working capital, support for purchase orders and being able to fulfill them, um, facilities improvement, what have you. So very flexible in terms of how, we, how borrowers can use the money. And again, this is designed to be inclusive and flexible with no personal credit scores, no personal guarantees, uh, options for revenue-based financing so that Instead of a set monthly payment, you can have a monthly payment that flexes with the ups and downs of your organization. For the revenue-based financing, this is not intended to be um, more like equity, but really similar to debt in its, in its orientation. I'm happy to answer questions about that when we get to the Q&A section. Finally, we've also supported individuals and organizations that needed to have Islamic compliant financing, and we're happy to make Islamic financing structures available to avoid interest, but instead have a set fixed fee. And again, supporting folks with uh, speaking different languages as well. So commercial loans for US-based businesses and nonprofits. 
They need to be planning to grow their impact, um, not just trying to get out of an emergency situation, though we know that many are challenged with that at this time. This is really meant to grow from fairly stable or existing opportunities to grow and, and expand that. Financially aligned with this program, again, consistent or growing revenues, there's gonna be, we definitely take into account the COVID environment and how we underwrite and are working with compassion to be able to understand the challenges that folks are going through right now. But really seeking this $50,000 to $250,000 amount um, I will note that we are open to having larger deal sizes as we have partners that we can co-invest with as well. Um, less than 30% of the budget for, the, for businesses and nonprofits that are seeking capital should be used for existing debt. We're signatories of the Small Business Borrowers Bill of Rights, and we won't make a loan that we think will put a borrower into a bad position financially. So we're really here to support and help you grow. And the last component of what kinds of businesses and nonprofits we're looking for, is really this strong and compassionate relationship to people on the move. This can be shown through the ownership, leadership, and team that have a deep knowledge, maybe themselves being people on the move or have been uh, folks that were on the move and preference for community-based solutions and really being able to, uh, sorry, says it that, that I've muted. Can you hear me okay? Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. So preference for community-based solutions and direct service, working more in partnership with people on the move rather than having a abstracted technology solution. We are open to technology solutions if they have deep impact. So to that end, just keep going quickly through these uh, very dry slides of bullet points. Uh, what, what do we mean when we say activities that intentionally improve the lives of people on the move? We unpacking first and foremost, the activities component, so it's providing training, jobs, and access to critical services. So that can be social determinants of health, that can be direct health care, can be immigration, legal support, all sorts of different types of things that are supporting people on the move. And then for identifying what we mean by people on the move, this is immigrants, refugees, asylees, and asylum seekers low-income economic migrants, undocumented individuals, and survivors of trafficking. If you think I'm close, but not quite, we encourage you to just reach out and uh, have a conversation with us. We did note that some, some of the questions we got as we started spreading the word about this program was a question, can we have impact in another country if we're based here? And the answer is yes. We wanna be uh, looking at U.S. impact because that's our background. That's where we have the capacity to actually assess that viability, but we are open to seeing programs that are outside of the United States as well. Just need to be based in the U.S. because of the fun things of working across borders. So really have a focus on, in this, the most vulnerable populations whose needs can be served by impact investing. Again, these are commercial loans. These are not grants. These are not, um, there's no current structure for forgiveness or recoverability the way that Paycheck Protection Program from the SBA has been rolled out. Um, this is really to support organizations that can have an existing form of revenue, but supporting the most vulnerable populations in the US. So not eligible in that because it's pretty broad when you think about it. We're open to supporting small businesses, nonprofits, and social enterprises anywhere in the US as long as you're intentionally supporting uh, immigrants and refugees and survivors of trafficking. 
What's not eligible, the individual is applying for themselves. This is not a consumer lending product. This is a commercial lending product. And we cannot lend to organizations based outside of the US. It needs to be to a US domiciled organization. And we also will not lend to organizations that have discriminatory or exploitive policies and practices. There are a few industries and lines of business that are not eligible. These are because we are in compliance with vice industries from the federal government. Um, so we can't have tanning salons, massage parlors, golf courses, country clubs, hot tub facilities, race tracks, gambling facilities, or weapons, alcohol, tobacco, cannabis, abortion, contraceptives, embryonic stem cell research, pornography, or adult entertainment. And we'll note for the alcohol, um, less than 20% of revenue can come from alcohol sales. So restaurants that still make significant uh, revenue from alcohol sales could be considered. Um, that is okay, but it should be less than 20% of revenue. Uh, definitely no liquor stores are uh, eligible though. So I mentioned before, some things to consider for your organization if you're thinking about people on the move. This is not a grant. It is not forgivable like the PPP, Paycheck Protection Program. And for you to consider, what do you need this loan for? We take a different approach to underwriting than many other financial institutions. While we're making loans, we like to, uh, channeling a, a quote from my friend Bill, like to drive the car looking out the windshield instead of driving the car just by using the rear view mirror. We do check our mirrors. We check your history, what's happened in the past, what, it's, what, have, you, uh, what have your historical financials looked like, but really we wanna know what your vision and your plan are to move forward. How do you want to be supporting people on the move and how will this capital help you to do that? So that's where we want to hear, what do you need this loan for? To consider and reflect, this is what I want to see for my community. This is what we want to be able to do if only we had this kind of capital. And again, because it's not a grant and it's not forgivable, we want to make sure that you have the revenue to be able to repay this loan within four years. To do that, since most of us don't sit around thinking about what loan payments might look like, we did some simple math. Um, so this program is designed to offer between 50 and $250,000 loans. So using somewhere in the middle with 100,000, I like easy numbers, at a 6% interest rate and a four year term, we're looking at roughly a $2,000 monthly payment, a little bit higher. If you have a shorter term, that's going to be, of course, more than that. Um, but that's what you can use as a ballpark to see, can I afford to take on this kind of capital? All right, into the anticipated timeline for this project. Um, we, are, we have this on a rolling basis. We're taking in applications now. We've gotten a few. Today, you can tell from those of you that can see the slides, we are in our information session. We'll be making this available to the public online. And then April through June, really quarter two of this year, our goal is to approve and fund five to 10 loans. So while this is on a rolling basis, rolling application, we do encourage people to send us their inquiry forms, share a little bit about your organization and your plan, so that we can make those early commitments. We, if this is not first come, first serve, we don't believe that that's a very equitable way to run things, but we will be looking for um, early applications to be able to make those commitments uh, starting next month. We'll, we will be having rolling approvals through the remainder of 2021. And at that point, we wanna be able to see, see what happened. What kind of appetite did we get? Again, 
goal of the program is to test the appetite for this kind of impact-based capital and then be able to demonstrate to other investors what this could look like and be able to expand the program hopefully in 2022. So uh, to apply, you just go to our website. I'll put that link up or uh, um, an individual from our team will put that in the chat as well. But on the main page of the People on the Move web, web page is a link to just say, tell us a little bit more about your company. Um, so you can just do that straight there. And then our team will follow up to set a conversation and learn more about your organization. If you fit into the preliminary criteria that we talked about, then you'll be invited to upload materials to our secure lending and underwriting platform. Great. So with that, I think we are into the questions and comments. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so that we can see each other. And also um, if I can ask Wilda on our team to, Actually, no, I'll handle it. You can now unmute yourselves if you'd like to ask a question. Um, but Laura, did we have anything in the chat that you wanted to surface for us to? Okay. No. So this is your time. Um, you're here, Carrie, who's gonna be leading underwriting um, and support for borrower services is here as well. And she and I are happy to answer questions about the program, about the process, anything that would be helpful for you. I can't believe that we answered everybody's questions. We just had one come in in the chat. Got it. So a couple of pieces um, from a question from Noemi, would you be able to assist a startup cost for community-based services? Um, Noemi, I'm wondering, is this a startup organization or a startup of a new program? Don't know yet from Noemi. So for startup organizations, uh, start up for a new program of an existing organization, we'd be happy to look at that and see um, if this could be uh, revenue lines that are associated with those mental services, if that is uh, likely. We like, again, we like to drive the car by looking out the, the windshield, looking ahead to your goals. And so being able to see what kind of contracts are likely for you to get, um, what kind of revenue you would be anticipating for this new program. Yes, we'd be happy to look at a startup for new programs. For new organizations, we tend to do a similar approach of if you have managed to get um, a contract, a purchase order, you have a pending verbal offer to buy something, your goods or services, that is something that we're willing to finance as well. Um, we do a lot of that in our hometown of San Diego. I did see a question from Patricia around why did we, why did we set the interest rate the way that we did? Um, first, we're making loans that are of a different uh, risk profile then fit into bank or CDFI uh, lending criteria for the most part. And so they're taking on a slightly different risk profile. We do not have a loan loss reserve in place. And so the 6% the interest rate is intended to cover losses of this pilot test, as well as the operations for running the, the program. Um, ideally, we'd be able to drop the cost of capital out to potential borrowers. Um, but at this point, we, we do need to make sure that we are building in cost and loss coverage for the operation.
For the questions about to the tactics of the recording, we will be sending out the recording information after the session is complete and it will be on our website. Um, and the question as well on structurally, we are a for-profit company, Mission Driven Finance is a, a California LLC and certified B Corporation. Um, so we do have mission baked into our actual legal operating agreement. And we are very much more partnering together to be able to make this possible. It's one of the things that we do for companies and nonprofits and funds around the country is to provide back office fund management and fund administration to support great folks that have a plan for their community and being able to run a, a uh, community sized loan fund. Other questions I can answer or Carrie, love to put Carrie on the spot. Um, yes, Patricia. Go. Sure. Um, I just, uh, our finance officer had some questions and I'm, you know, I'm sort of reading them. Um, so you, for our for-profit businesses eligible for these loans? Yes. For-profit businesses are eligible and non-profit businesses are eligible. Do you have different criteria for for-profit or non-profit when you give loans out? We do not. Uh, we just are... The way that we underwrite for nonprofit organizations does take into account what kind of regular donated revenue as well as earned revenue and being able to assess those forecasts for ongoing budget. Um, as a former nonprofit fundraiser, I definitely know that sometimes those grant budgets can be wildly fluctuating. So we do take some of that into account as we're underwriting nonprofits. Okay. Great question from Casey on, um, are there any restrictions of how old an organization must be to apply or how large their budget must be? No, um, you can be a brand new organization. If you have revenue lines, you have um, maybe county services that you offer or have some other kind of contracted revenue. That'd be great for us to see. You can be six months old and that's happening and we're happy to look at that. Um, in terms of how large your budget must be, really we're looking for that capacity to successfully repay a loan and not put yourself in a challenging situation. So we do have that roughly a third of your budget. So if you're a $150,000 organization and you want to take out a $50,000 loan, that's right on the edge of what we look at. Um, we would want to see a little bit more than that so that this isn't a burden to you. Um, for the amortization structure, is it interest only and principal paid in a lump sum at maturity? We're flexible on what we set out, but typically we're looking at not doing interest only. We'll have a short interest only period and um, that's debated and structured for each borrower to best fit their needs. Um, but it is typically fully amortizing within about two months of the loan. The other question that my um boss, I suppose you'd call it, I had on my list of things to ask. Um, he wouldn't phrase it quite this way. He'd use more official terms. But some of the people on this um, uh, Zoom session uh, you're, are people that might be thinking of borrowing something from you. Um, others of us, are you... Um, Others of us, are you asking us to consider investing in you in some way? And if so, um, do we buy shares? Um, or, you know, is there a required time period? Um, do you pay it back in little bits or how does that all work? 
Great question. We are not currently seeking outside capital. This is right now, this period, 2021, really testing the outbound deal flow. Um, what kind for borrowers that are looking for capital themselves, that's our primary goal right now. And to really get a better sense of what their needs are, what does this kind of risk profile look like? Um, how do we want to structure this going forward? potentially build in a loan loss reserve into the future, bring down cost of capital, those types of things. Um, but at this stage, we are not looking for outside capital to participate in this, maybe next year um, or maybe later in Q3. If you are interested in, in talking about that, by all means. Um, Just trying to find out to, about it. This yeah. Point. Thank you. Um, for those that are, um, I wanna make sure I captured all of that question. Um, I think maybe I did. Did yeah. I miss anything, Patricia? Okay. Great. So um, for to stay in touch with us, um, our team put in the chat, but for those that may be on the phone or audio folks, we are easily reached online at by email at borrow at missiondrivenfinance.com and through our website, missiondrivenfinance.com, you can navigate to borrow and people on the move and that it will get you to all of the information about the program. But by all means, happy to stay here. Um, for those of you that don't have questions, you're welcome to continue about the rest of your Friday, um, but you can ask about, uh, I'll stay on for another 10 minutes and ask, answer any other questions that folks have. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, I'm gonna count that as uh, asking for the gift of time. So enjoy all of your weekends and we are happy to answer further questions that you have via email at borrow at missiondrivenfinance.com. Thank you.